I'm going to try and keep this to five minutes. So what I want to talk about just really quickly is some of the challenges that I see AI raising, how those apply to our political and social lives and compound problems that are maybe already there. And then some of the suggestions I have for thinking about ways to move forward. So some of this might sound familiar to you. Some of it, we could get very much in the weeds, but we'll try and avoid the weeds for now. Um, so three quick problems. First of all is AI inevitably produces and compounds biases and misinformation. We could talk about this more, but one reason is a technical reason with how an AI is built. The way you build an AI is with lots and lots and lots of data. And you have to use so much that inevitably misinformation and bias gets in there, no matter what your intentions are. So that's a problem and it ends up compounding biases and misinformation. And no doubt you've seen some of this um, in, in the news as AI has been such so much in the news cycle the last, last year or so. A second problem with AI is that it has the power to sway our opinions. Um, we don't even have to talk about the newfangled stuff here. Think about your own Amazon YouTube browsing. I know Amazon has nudged me towards books with its AI algorithms and YouTube has gotten me watching videos for a half hour and I'll pinch myself and realize I don't even care about this video. Why am I watching it? But somehow it knows my desires before I do and very scarily helps shaping those desires in ways that we're sometimes not intentional about. And a third one are the deep fakes that AI is capable of. No doubt you've seen there were all the memes of Pope Francis doing all manner of things about a year ago that were all over the internet. Um, he became very much a, a, a um, central point for these memes, but we're capable of gem generating audio and visual images um, in ways that look very realistic, but aren't. So a lot of times, at least in my context, we initially start thinking about some of these problems with AI in terms of education, right? I'm a professor and my fellow professors talk a lot about how do we catch students cheating with this? Um, I know the entertainment industry and uh, the actual, the, the um, magazine industry, um, relevantly enough, has talked about this a lot, thinking about, well, how can we copyright our content if AI is using our content and generating content that looks like the stuff that we're publishing? Um, those are important concerns. What I want us to focus on today is to think more about the ways in which these problems apply to our social and political lives. So we can think about this more, but think about all three of these themes, biases and misinformation, the capacity for deep faking, the capacity to sway opinion in ways that we're maybe not even fully aware of. Those should all be really scary when we start thinking about the potential that AI has for shaping and turning and giving us misinformation in our political lives. And I think has really the capacity to silo us even more, to increase biases even more, to compound misinformation even more. So I really do think that some of the worries people have been talking about when it comes to artificial intelligence have been well-founded. I think there is a lot of potential there for some really deeply serious problems and things that can really compound the problems that we've already seen in society the last 10 or 20 years. So what are some solutions? They just want to hint at that as well. And then hopefully I'll be in right around five minutes. Um, two things. One is education. I think that the more we learn about artificial intelligence, even just a little bit, even just learn about some of the problems it poses, a little bit of education goes a long ways. Think about how most of us here have at least a passing familiarity with internet spaces. So we know roughly what Wikipedia is. We know kind of what we're doing when we do a Google search. We kind of know what social media is. You know, you don't have to be a programmer or a tech person to know this. We kind of have a passing familiarity in a way that we're able to notice, oh, that's an ad or, oh, this is coming from this website that looks not, not that trustworthy. I think just a little bit more of that when it comes to artificial intelligence. Most of us don't have that literacy yet, but if we build it, I think that's one way to really protect against some of the problems that AI is raising and hopefully protect against some of the siloing effects that AI really could have when applied to our political lives. And then the second piece of advice I wanted to leave you with, and again, we can talk about whatever you want to when it comes to AI more than this. Um, I think this is probably a good suggestion for a lot of our technological lives is to dial things back by maybe a couple of decades. Um, 
I'm currently sitting in my basement on the internet, using a fancy microphone on the internet, on my laptop computer. I'm not a technology naysayer, but I do think that sometimes the best response to new technologies is to say no to them, to say, I'm not going to get my political information and have my political opinion shaped by the internet, but rather by the communities that care for me and by the people I interact with on a daily basis. Um, so I think a move to less, less, digital and more local spaces, more in-person communication. It's good for us in many ways, but I think when it comes to our political and social lives, I think that that can be a really good thing. And we're not fully there here right now because we're on Zoom, but I think things like this are a very healthy sort of forum for doing that and much healthier than casting off into the netherworld of the internet where the AIs lurk and have the potential to sway us this way and that. So that's that's my opening thoughts.